Hey guys, it's me, Stormy, and we are going to take a look at the astrology of the new moon coming Friday, December 7th, 2018, happening at 15 degrees of Sagittarius just right down here. So if you're new to my channel or just still continuing to learn a little bit about astrology, when we have a new moon, the new moon actually represents the end of one cycle and the beginning of another cycle. And this all happens in about 28 days. And what you see is that the sun and the moon are together here in conjunction, holding hands. And so when the sun and the moon are together, when they come together like that, anything's possible. So we say at this new moon, this is the time to plant those seeds of intention, make a fresh start, begin a new project, something like that, right? And I also think because it is the ending of a cycle and the beginning of the next, it's also a great time to shed old beliefs and behaviors and things like that because the new moon could, just depending on which one it is, put you under enough pressure that it gives you a little bit of motivation to behave or to move towards something a little bit differently. Now, the new moon energy will last up to four weeks, taking us all the way to the solar eclipse that will be happening at the beginning of January, January 5th, 2019. So right now in this next four weeks is a really good time to start something new. You have the most power in the first two weeks of it. And you could also see that perhaps there are some playbacks from the last new moon, full moon that we have. So, you know, is there something that you started or you were starting to think about or work on um, as we were in November and now you're seeing a little bit of energy from that here in December? That's completely a possibility of what you could be looking at as well. Now, what is actually happening at this moon. So first of all, as we're looking at the moon, we see that the aspects um, that we have here are a conjunction here at 15 degrees with the moon and the sun. We're not considering Jupiter and um, Mercury here because they're too far outside of the conjunct degree, okay? And then we've also got Mars and Neptune here in conjunction in Pisces at 13 degrees, right? So we've got two different sets of energy happening on their own. These are two aspects in and of themselves, right? But then we have got these particular, this particular set of conjunction also in a square to the new moon. And that is individually. So we've got Mars in a square and we've got Neptune in a square to the new moon. And each of those have a little bit of energetic change. But when we bring it all home, what is it about? Well, first and foremost, the, the new moon in Sagittarius energy, Sagittarius is pretty happy-go-lucky, right? They are um, fun, they're vibrant, they're very optimistic, they're truth seekers, they're information seekers, they want to gather the information and also share it, right? So they like to expand. They like to expand their knowledge. Now they can also be a little bit overindulgent, a little bit of an exaggerator, right? We definitely have that energy. So here with this new moon, some new thing or some old behavior for you could be a little bit exaggerated, right? Or maybe you feel like it's fine. It's not been a big deal. But because we have these energies over here in a square to our action planet and our idea planet or our idea planet, this could definitely be a place where there is an issue, right? Maybe the rose-colored glasses have been on a little bit too much, right? Do we have some denial going on about something? You know, is this a place where perhaps there needs to be some forgiveness up on the table, right? There's some piece of information here that could certainly be, um, something that is in a, in a space of deception, right? Pisces, Neptunian energy doesn't always make information completely clear because it's a move between the worlds kind of energy, right? So we could have fear, we could have deception, we could have some shame that rises to the surface, right? Now with it being a new moon, while these squares put you under some pressure and it's uncomfortable and maybe there's some tension, I think what it gives you the incentive to do is to make progress in a way that's a little bit more grounded. Also to make progress in a way where if you are carrying shame, guilt, um, worry, anxiety, tension, that these are things you're ready to let go of to begin your new cycle. So let's talk about these placements um, on their own for just a second, okay? 
So first and foremost, having this new moon energy in a square to Neptune, first of all, <clears throat> when we've got a square to Neptune, it can weaken your energy. It can weaken your immune system. It can bring health issues to the surface, right? Whatever it is though, too, there could be a confusion in there some way, shape, or form. But I think that this energy is very powerful for bringing an insecurity or something to the surface, right? Or it could also bring an energy into your life um, that is just the personal relationship could have an area of maybe dishonesty or maybe there's a secret or something that's trying to come to the surface so that you can let it go. I will tell you it's the holiday time in many places. If you are sensitive to drugs and alcohol, you have any kind of pre or prior mental conditions, this could definitely be an energy that kind of aggravates that a little bit. But it could also show you a new solution as to how to handle that. Because remember, you're under the pressure of a square. You've got to take an action to get out of that square. You're going to take an action to not be under so much pressure. So if anything feels like it's it's off or you've got some of those emotions rising to the surface, what's the new action you can take around that, right? If that person that you just can't stand walks into the room, do you need to clean that up, right? Do you need to make peace there? What could be happening there? Now, with the new moon in a square to Mars over here, who is not traditionally comfortable in Pisces energy, um, this is certainly an energy where Mars really wants to assert his power and his action and his energy in Pisces, but he cannot do it there, right? So this already makes Mars a little bit cranky and a little bit irritable, and it's in a square to you trying to expand out and be optimistic and all of these other things. So this could bring some challenging people or events into your life. I told you there's a space here where you could have shame, guilt, any of those things. And with Mars here, there could be a space where you've got, if there's been a built up of resentments, if there's been a buildup of anger or anything like that, that's been kind of bubbling beneath the surface. Because remember, the moon still shows us what's subconsciously, unconsciously hanging out, you know, in the places we're not necessarily conscious of all the time. But with Mars here, this could definitely be bringing energy out into the surface and you're, it could be tense. It could be a little bit competitive. It could be a little bit testing. Right? So what you're wanting to do necessarily with this aspect is channel that energy into something really, really positive. Channel that energy into doing something productive. Maybe work with children, be creative with elderly people, um, help people who are sick, work with animals, something like that so that you can expel that energy out of your body, right? Now, having Mars and Neptune in a conjunction in and of itself, um, because it's got that square to the moon, the conjunction can make you feel a little bit blissful in and of its own, right? It could be an energy because Mars is forced to act like a Pisces. So he's like, okay, we're going to take spiritual actions over here. I'm going to be a spiritual flower. I'm going to push your creativity out. I'm going to push out your compassion. I'm going to push out your forgiveness, right? So with these two together, this just makes me feel like it's a very sensitive energy, right? It's an energy where you want to keep yourself grounded as much as possible, but be creative, right? Avoid people who are just being negative, negative, negative. If people cannot see your vision, if people don't support who you are and what you're doing, um, move away from them, right? Move into positions where you feel a little bit more supported. This square energy here is telling you in some way, shape, or form, you may not feel supported in a new project or in moving forward in some way, and you've got to get out of that. Now, Mars is a sexual energy as well, and because Neptune can be a little bit deceptive, I would tell you, um, you know, watch out for any kind of, I don't, I don't want to call it sexual poisoning. That's not, not, not the right phrase that I'm looking for, but you know, make sure your sexuality 
is safe and that you're in check, okay? Um, you know, don't let somebody be giving you the old shuck and jive and you're just so great and amazing and they're doing it just to kind of get you in bed or something like that. So um, be mindful of what's going on and try and stay grounded with this energy. But certainly you see here how this could also play out, right? Here's somebody over here giving you all kinds of words and it's all gonna be so good. And then what's happening on the other side is it's not accurate, right? So it's a beautiful new moon for still continuing to make a new start, but you want to be aware of what's what. Ask lots of questions, fact checks, fact checked, and definitely do your work so that you make sure that you are protected. And then you can really enjoy this moon. You can enjoy having a space of optimistic expansion as well. So I hope that this gives you a little bit of guidance. Make sure that you grab your chart. You want to look for your Sagittarian energy and see where it's happening. It's at 15 degrees. You're also going to want to look at possibly, well, mostly I would tell you to look at your Sagittarian energy because these energies are the transits. So it's going to be the same no matter where it happens in your chart, but see what else it's aspecting or interacting with in your personal chart, okay? And if you don't know how to do that or you don't have a chart, please come to stormygrace.com, order a chart, or take advantage of the 45,000 subscriber gift that is still up and let's sit down and go over how these things are going to impact you. Because the last thing you want is somebody telling you lies or having a project that's not exactly what you thought it was. Um, and then it kind of blows up in your face or something like that. So let's, let's navigate through as smoothly as we can, all right? Okay, you guys like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. I love you guys.